Okay, we'll get started. Looks like everybody's in. So as I said, welcome to the August 11th, 2020 Plant3D User Community Meetup. My name is David Manning and I'll be with you today. Before we get into the details, I'll just remind you, please keep uh, yourself muted. I think everybody should be able to unmute yourselves if you so wish. Uh, so that you can ask questions as we're going through. But if you're not asking questions, please keep yourself muted to keep the uh, recording nice and clean. And if you do have a question, you can either unmute yourself, raise your hand, or you put it into the question uh, and answer panel at any stage. Now, so this is being recorded as it is every month and will be available on our relatively new shiny YouTube playlist relatively soon after we're finished. Uh, you should all be seeing my screen, uh, which has the before we begin slide on it. And uh, just as a reminder, this is me, Dave Manning, specialist, uh, primarily in Plants 3D and PNID, but I also support a number of other products, including AutoCAD, Recap, Fusion 360, Navisworks, and of course, the BIM 360 suite. Um, if you need any help with those, please feel free to reach out. Uh, if you know it's not, not with me today, he's got other things keeping him busy, and the rest of the team there doing the other geos, I'll skip past them. Today's agenda is, uh, as usual, we're going to go through the overview we're going through now, the Plant 3D News. Uh, we've got a, a nice little tidbit there. And today's theme is very simple. It's about project units, when to use metric, when to use imperial, and how that affects your catalogs and specs. There will be time at the end for questions uh, where we can delve into some sort of specific workflows if you want to, or something completely unrelated to today's topic if you would like to go through it. Uh, if you've got things that are completely unrelated to what we're talking about, please throw them in the Q&A and we'll get to those at the end. So the overview for today, and I said it's an over, we'll touch on first an overview of the project units, that's after the, the news topic. We'll also then have a look at units for catalogs and specs and how they affect our parts and some best practices for using Imperial and metric projects uh, parts in projects. Now, as always, this is a casual engagement, um, is a, especially intended to be a conversation between the Plant 3D user community and the uh, specialist team inside Autodesk. So please think of those questions and we'll come to those near the end. Uh, I don't think we need the safe harbor statement today. I don't think we're planning to talk too much about the future. But uh, just in case uh, if you get, you're making any purchasing decisions about anything, please don't take everything I say as being audited as policy. You know, what I would tell you is the best of my knowledge as it is today. Uh, if you're making those decisions, please ver ver validate them directly with Autodesk in official capacity, please. So Plant 3D news. Let's crack into that. So as we did discuss this in the recent months. We thought it was probably most interesting and certainly worth while touching on again. Uh, certainly I missed it when it came out originally and hadn't noticed, and I didn't hear about it for about a couple of weeks anyway. So we bring this up to re remind everybody or to point out to people who have missed it that the model coordination spaces now include project files. Originally, uh, for the beginning of this year, you could only point to plans folders. Now it has been extended to the project files. And this is great for Plant 3D and other AutoCAD users because we don't publish to the plans folders uh, the way uh, products like Revit do. Uh, this adds the support for us to use uh, model coordination in a direct fashion, uh, like a work in progress. We had previously discussed workflows for using reviews and things to get models federated into plans, but it still ultimately was a manual process. To show you what that means, I'm going to change my screen to my web browser. I've already got it open. I'll bring that across to here. So I'm already in my BIM360 project. I'm looking at project admin. If you haven't seen it before, you need to go to the go to project admin, which is coming out of this menu here, this project admin button. That will open this page and you'll have all the services available once you click on the services tab here. Uh, once you've got that open, what you're actually looking for is the model coordination tab. If you don't see this here, one of two things, either you're not a project admin or you don't have that service turned on, in which case you need to activate the service. Just be aware it is an additional service, so there's additional costs. Please make sure you get the right approvals to do that. So model coordination, when you click on that, you'll come in here and if you've got things set up, you'll see this space as it is uh, with a number of different coordination areas. Now, if I go to create one now, uh, I'm just going to put in test. 
you'll notice we now have the availability for the plans folders and we can pick any folder in here or the project files to select a folder that is going to be used in the coordination space. Now, if I just cancel that, you can see here we had previously done a number of area ones, area folders for the plans section. We've since deactivated those. So just a quick tip there, you can activate and deactivate coordination areas. And we also have this new area one work in project models. The rest of these are being managed through the approval process. So the file, once it's approved, gets copied into a specific folder that then gets automatically um, federated and clash detected. So what that looks like, this is pointing to a folder in docs. So I'm gonna go across to docs, which is my next tab. This is in my project, same project. <clears throat> Under the project files, my plant 3D project, and the 3D models in area one, I've got my sample project models, the structural and piping one and piping two. Whenever these get saved in Plant 3D and checked in with the coordination projects, these will get a new version. And when that new version goes in, the system will see that it's been updated and it will automatically take it into the coordination space. So I'm going to move across to the coordination. To do that, if I would come here and I would select coordination from there and it would open that up. I've already done that and I have it on a separate tab to save time. And in here, we can see a few things. Uh, it's showing me already by default because I've been there before, area one models work in progress. And we can see here it's showing the same models. And if I open that, we can see the other areas as well. So we've got one here that is all federated project models. That's the ones that have all the project models that have been through the uh, approval process. And this one here is all project models, uh, which is all the ones that are in the work in progress area. So we can change between those by, by simply picking an, an area. And I can do a number of things. I can select these and I can select all three of these to be viewed uh, in the same space. And these could be DDWGs, they could be rivets, they could be IFC files. And I can view them all in context in the same model, same view space. But the most interesting thing is if I come across to the clashes, we can see what's happened in the background. The system has looked at these models, put them together, federated them together into a single space and analyzed them for clashes. And I can see there's one clash between piping model one and piping model two, and two uh, that in piping model two, that clash with something in piping model one or vice versa. And there's also 64 structural clashes with piping model one. Now I know there are actually some pipe shoes, which is quite interesting, but if I want to look at that clash, I can left click on that and that will open both those models for me and just both those models. If you, you can have a whole, you know, dozens of models in this space if you want to. And that will show me that specific clash. Uh, if there's numerous clashes like the 64 clashes, also pick those individual clashes. I just give it a moment to load. So in this case here, we can see this clash of these two components. We can click on that and a two clash. It'll show one in red and one in green, depending what I'm looking at. Just give that a moment. So we can see here, this pipe is clashing with both of these. And if I want to, I can turn this into an issue. Create an issue. I'm going to pick a point on the screen to tell it exactly where that physically is. And I can come through here. It tells it automatically, automatically populates a number of things for me. Uh, I'm going to sign it to myself. I can give myself a due date of Friday this week. Um, I can give a location if I want to, any other location details. So we could say pipe rack three, area one, you know, whatever you particularly find useful. And uh, let's say design coordination because it's two pipes. Any other details you want to add in here and create. And that will create a trackable issue. It'll notify me as the person assigned it to uh, that there's an issue. And uh, I can then come back in and have a look at that. And it shows me this model uh, in situ after I've finished there. We can also do um, issues that are not related to specific while we're here, uh, but that's not topic for today. So this is a really, really good way to look at that. And if I go back into the model, if I go back to document management, 
I go to issues, we should see that issue populate already, seeing that everything is connected. So coordination clash uh, from me, due date is Friday, drawing two. And if I wanted to, I can click on that, open the details. And of course, I can go back to the, the drawing if I need to as well by clicking on that link and it will open those drawings. So a fully connected integrated process, you can do automatic clash detection. And the big advantage of the coordination space is the linking all of IFC, Revit and Plant 3D models all into one federated space without having to do exports or any of that sort of stuff. Uh, obviously, it doesn't bring it back down into your, uh, your editing or authoring product, but is a really good place to have a look at uh, the designs in, um, in place with everything else. And like I said, I can go back to all project models and it will do exactly the same thing for all the models in that project. So very, very deep and we can get project views as well. Okay, so I'm going to leave that there. If you've got any further questions on that, please let me know and I can come back to it at the end. Uh, let's go back to the presentation. I'll just check that's coming up on your screen. Project news, good. I'm not seeing any raised hands or unmuting or questions, so I'll think that's good for now. So let's delve into the nitty gritty of this month's topic, Plant 3D Project Units. Let's take an overview look at that. So in general terms, we talk about two basic units, Imperial and Metric. Most people will be familiar with that. Imperial being typically America Central, uh, Metric typically being uh, um, or Australia to me, but another <laughs> number of other areas as well. Um, there's obviously, but it varies right around the world. The other subset of that is of course the mixed metric because a lot of piping standards uh, are based in on Imperial standards both because they come from various areas of the world, but also because they came from a time when we all used uh, Imperial. We can show diameters or nominal diameters in Imperial while lengths are in metric measurements. Okay, so we've got two different major systems. Um, the mixed metric, I consider it part of the metric system and it's kind of highlighted by the structure on this dialog. The point of this screen is when you're creating a project, this is one of the windows that you select as you're configuring it. Don't just uh, ignore it, uh, actually take a pause and have a think about what units the project should be because it does have a big effect on the rest of the project systems. And once a project is created, it, uh, is, it can't really be changed. So that's the project settings and that's how you would define the units. Um, why it's important and one of the reasons why that's going to be uh, really should be paying attention to it. If you're using template projects, it uh, doesn't give the option to change it. But if you're not and you're creating new projects, it, but you need to copy drawings or components uh, from or contents of drawings from one project to the next, this is when you're going to come into problems. In this case here, and this used to be an article, but we've uh, since not been able to find it, uh, at least not for today's meeting. So it may still be out there or, uh, or, or maybe not. Uh, but the simple reality is this is going out there, so it's out there again. Um, what this is looking at is if you're going to take a drawing from one project to another, uh, how is that affected by the project units? And you probably would have seen this if you tried it uh, when you've come across the nose there. So the simple answer is the primary units, metric and imperial, um, need to match if you're going to copy your drawing. So at the table, we look at metric uh, and mixed metric at the top there. You cannot copy imperial drawings into a metric project, but you can copy from mixed metric to metric because they're the same core unit being metric. And similarly, you cannot copy a metric drawing into an imperial one or a mixed metric one into an imperial project either. Okay, And that includes copying components from within the drawings too. Just pausing there for any questions. Don't see any coming in. Okay, so imperial and metric parts. So just to, just pause for a moment. There's two primary kinds of parts in Plant 3D uh, from the 3D side. So in the in the PNID side, of course, we've got block-based parts for all of PNID, and and that's fairly straightforward. In the 3D side, we have two different kinds of parts. We have, and you can see in the bottom left there, the AutoCAD DWG 3D block based components. So they're blocks that you've drawn in 3D 
uh, and generate and use them to generate your catalog or spec components. Now, the other side is what typically comes with most of the standard stuff out of the box, which is our parametric or dimension driven shapes. And these, these are using Python scripts to define the shape itself from the geometry provided in the catalog. The graphics you see on the top right hand side is what's, what's driving that, and that's where all those dimensions are, um, are important. All those uh, H1, D1, W1, et cetera, are all looking for, uh, is, the, is the Python script looking for a number to be able to po uh, populate that size? So key point here is there's two different kinds of shapes and it's, it's relatively different how they're affected by the size or the dimensions. So units for catalogs, let's look at the parametric parts first. When you're creating catalog parts, um, you need to define the units. So this is what we talk about when you're creating it. Uh, if you're creating an individual part set, it does ask you, and you can see that highlighted in yellow there, the imperial or the metric size, it is a requirement. There's no option to ignore it. And that will define the, the, the unit as part of the part in the, or the series of parts in the catalog, the uh, component set. And that will also drive what the size looks like as you're building it. But you can pick one or the other. It is recommended, I think we touch on this later, that if you're building a metric catalog or you're adding them to a metric catalog, do them always in the same unit. So, so it doesn't matter. if you're doing it to a metric catalog, try and edit them in metric. If you're doing it to an imperial catalog, add them as an imperial component. To help you understand what we're looking at, there is actually two unit lengths uh, in the databases. Now this is something you probably wouldn't have seen or most people wouldn't have seen. We've had a look in the back end of the catalog into the uh, database. You can see that this is the DIN valves test, uh, test because we copied it, uh, PCAT, so yeah, piping catalog. And when we look at the engineering items, we can see one of the figures is unit length. Now what we're showing here is you can in fact put an imperial component into a metric standard. So DIN is the German standards and they are metric and they, uh, we've added a component in there as a test. You can see it was actually a valve and it was done in Imperial. While it went in, it was fine and it will probably function, but there are areas where you will come in and have problems. We did do that and I think we tested it by putting it into a drawing and it was fine, but best practice is keep it all in the same units. Okay, there is, uh, as a part of this general topic, there is another size as well under the nominal size, which is related to the nominal bore size, um, which is you'll see in the catalogs uh, around um, the, the physical nominal bore rather than the physical sizes. Okay, so as I said before, be sure to edit the catalog in the catalog's native units. So if you're editing a uh, metric catalog, edit everything in metric. If you're doing an imperial catalog, edit everything in imperial units. And you may or may not know, you can actually change that uh, through the part editor. I'm just going to have a quick, quick crank that up in the background. Uh, and I'll show you what it looks like. If we open a, let's go to the valves cat. There you go, of course, catalog editor. You go to catalogs here, uh, and I'm assuming you're seeing that. Yes, uh, over to catalogs, you can change. Now, I've just started this session, so it's not giving me any indication here, but we can see, um, well, you can see, but I can't, uh, that the sizes, if I go to sizes, uh, these are all looking like, uh, what am I mean, which, which standard ASME valves, these would be probably imperial sizes, 26 inch. 26 inch, 26 inch, 14. But it's not telling me what units I'm in, and it's because I've just launched this session. If I change that to metric units, we'll see that blows out by 25.4001, um, roughly. Units to now work in metric. Uh, and I can change that back to imperial just as easily. But like we said, try and edit in the native units for the project. Uh, and you can see that there. So that changes that and varies those. So there's numerous places you'll see that, but the sizes are the most obvious. Uh, I think there's a question coming there somewhere. Chat.
Ah, looks like Vinod's joined me. Thank you, Vinod. Yeah, confuse me with yeah, your chatting way. Thanks, David. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> go ahead. No, no, David. it's all good. Sorry. It's all good. So if you do have any yeah, questions, please put them in the... Sorry, go on. Yeah. And then I had some issues with the go to webinar. I'm here. Thanks. Ah, uh, wonderful. So yes, if you do have any questions, yeah. Vinod's with us now. Um, please put them into the Q and A panel or into the chat, and uh, we'll get onto those as soon as we can. And I will also pay attention to see if they come up. Um, and like I said, if you need to, feel free to unmute as well. I got lost. Okay, so yes, continuing with the parametrics and the partner initiatives. Uh, quick tip one. So this is a little little trick that's uh, really hard to understand. Uh, in some cases, if you haven't seen it before, it's going to really twist your noodle around uh, a little bit trying to figure out what's going on. If you're creating new, new components, um, always clear the filters. So these are the filters at the bottom of the catalog editor before you create the new parts. Otherwise, your windows, these panels here, come in blank. Um, so if, if this is active, now I'll show you what this looks like. I just drop over to my spec editor here. So if I put a filter in here, let's just do something simple, 150 pound. And let's go create new component. Doesn't really matter what I'm going to pick. I just need to put a size in and just do that. And I create, got to pick a graphic, of course. This is all gone a bit haywire. You can see this is not what it should be. That's not an elbow, that's a pipe. It's not following what it's to do, and it's to do with this filter being applied. So if I pick a command down here to clear that, uh, clear that filter, and if I do that again, I get create new components. I'll leave it one inch, and tests, elbow, that's fine, only the alone. Now we get the, the elbow as we desired, we get general properties, and it's all working as we expect. So that was purely because that filter's attached, it has been acknowledged and is in the system for the developers to look at, just so you're aware of it. Um, if you're seeing blanks there, it's just simply that filter, blow that away and you should be fine. The second quick tip we're looking at is uh, around the parametric part dimensions. So creating new parts, the initial dimensions are a default value. Always check these, don't assume they're right. And I would also suggest, don't assume that they are good practice either. So we've created this part here, it's running a one size in here, but if we had multiple sizes, uh, what the system does, it populates this size chart, the quite a lot of dimensions, that it's making a whole bunch of assumptions to try and get you uh, to have not have to do as much work as possible. While these may be right, or they may not be, and this diameter looks pretty one inch at, what am I editing this in? Imperial units. So this is giving me one, one inch diameter, uh, D1 is somewhere here. I can't even see D, can't even see D1. I lost it, doesn't matter, it's irrelevant. Uh, sorry, D is there, that little D there, that little pipe there is 114 inches. That's not right. That's probably uh, it's like a four inch um, pipe dimension to me. So these are not always right. Uh, don't assume anything. Go through and make sure you validate each one of these dimensions to make sure that they are what you need and require. Even these simple ones like zeros, uh, make sure they comply. This is a particularly complicated part. Um, but any of these offsets and things, just make sure they comply with what you're expecting and what you need for your part. If you need to use something to validate what is um, is good and correct, come come down to here and, and pick another part to have a look at that. I'm going to discard that. And do you notice that didn't come up when we changed it from the blank windows either? So something really goes wrong. Come down to something here and have a look at these existing parts that are working and use those as guidance, not the default values. Okay, so talk about that and that's highlighted there and you can also see just the bottom there you can see currently displaying in purely units. I should have used that to um, tell me what I was using. Um, good little check. Okay, I'm just going to pause for questions. Anything coming through Vinod? No, David, not yet. I'm looking into it. Cool, all right. We'll keep moving, nearly at 25 past the hour. So units for catalogs for block-based parts, block-based parts. These are a little bit different. So block-based parts, if you haven't done it before, 
is when you've got the AutoCAD block. When you, let's jump over there quickly. Uh, we can call up, actually, I don't do that. We'll stay here. Uh, you, you can use a block to create a component for a catalog. It will create one part for one size using that block. Um, it is important to use proper scaling of the block in the DWG. You can make un unitless blocks. Okay. As far as plant 3D is concerned, yeah, you need to specify the units. Otherwise, things don't work very well. Um, so the proper block unit and insertion scale for the catalog unit type. So if you're creating blocks for an imperial catalog, make sure when you're creating the drawing, the block units, and if you populate it here from the units, it will default here into the block definition. So make sure in your drawing that you've got the, the units set correctly. And when you create the block itself, make sure you it comes up here with the correct units that match the catalog. Okay, so drawing units, uh, and, and that this will populate to do with uh, match the drawing units anyway, but it's worth checking as you're creating. Uh, so make sure they're right. Now, when you go in and you're actually creating blocks from valves, this is the dialogue here, which is why I didn't go to spec editor. Um, this is an example one. It's a 3D uh, block for 100 mil gate valve using a metric catalog. So uh, this is not 100 inch. This is 100 mil millimeters. Excuse my Aussie abbreviation. Um, and we're creating one of, and we're using a custom AutoCAD block based graphic. So that uh, has already been taken, you know, browsed out, found the DWG that has that block in it, and um, selected it. And it's going to be this component here. And that will create that. If you do it in the wrong units, it just starts going all bad. Okay, so the block based parts must be the same as the catalog units. Okay, so best practices for imperial versus metric parts. Now, one of the things we can do in Plant 3D is, of course, join metric to imperial or vice versa parts within the Plant 3D project. It will normally want us to do that. A big part of that is the joint options to allow that to happen. Now, this case here, which is the default setting, is a mixed butt weld which is allowing an imperial or a metric joint to attach or an imperial joint to attach to a metric joint and the polarity doesn't matter. And in the bottom here, we can expand that in this default one. It is just talking about the nominal diameter as being or the pipe OD uh, as being the requirement to connect the two parts uh, being matching. You can increase that and make it uh, a tighter fit. Uh, but the default one is just there. And you can, of course, create more of these if you need to. Uh, if you go to do that, you can also see there's this learn more about there. It takes you to the help menu, great resource. Um, another thing not to overlook is the, the help menu for Paint 3D. There's been a lot of um, good content added in there. If you haven't looked at it in a while, jump in there and let's have a quick look if you're struggling to find something to get it to work. So to, to elaborate on the whole, um, you know, the butt world imperial to metric uh, connection. The graphic in the top left, this one up here, is going to be the um, connection that you're going to see. The, the, I wouldn't call it an error, the warning or the caution you'll get when you're connecting an imperial to metric. And that will allow you to do that if the connection works, like it's set up to work. You can see here, once this has been connected between these two specs, and again, it's just an example, um, CS150 to the, uh, the HC100 or HC, the joint type is shown as mixed butt weld because again, metric to imperial connection, and it's using that mixed joint configuration rule. Um, just a question in the Q&A, I think it's for later. Okay, so that's what it's gonna look like in your project. Um, Okay, so other best practices, toggle unit side display mode. Okay, inside um, Plant 3D, we have plant size display mode as an AutoCAD system variable. Now, uh, if you type that in, you can either do it two ways. You can type it into the command prompt, in which is this top line, the, this whole long bit of text, and then you get the option to pick project or mixed. Okay, and this is setting up the, the display within the plant user interface. 
You can also do exactly the same thing from the ribbon. Under the ribbon, uh, under the home tab, right next to your uh, unit display, and you can see here, this is in the mixed format, so four inch, 100 millimeters, uh, nominal bore, not, not real dimensions. Um, we can toggle this button here on and off, which will ultimately change the display of these units. Now, the key thing there is if you're in an Imperial project, it probably won't make any difference. Uh, I'm not sure if it adds that on or not, uh, but it can be handy for certainly for mixed um, units. I think the whole point here is, I haven't tested it. Uh, if it's a, it'll either show you as four inch or 100, and if you turn mixed on, it will show you both in this kind of view. Okay. Uh, and does it, and continuing that same theory as like we we're seeing in the ribbon there when you're picking it, in, in the, the properties, it's also gonna come through in here as well in your panels and things like that. Okay, that's a display thing, not a database thing. That is just the display on the user interface. So, you want to dig more into this? Um, that's the, the bog of the content for today. Uh, so, the next we're going to go through is into some questions and some we can just go back and do some live demonstrations if you like. Happy to go back into BIM 360 or we can get a plant 3D and have a look at anything. We are well and truly ahead of the full hour, back into our traditional 30 minute slot, which is fine. Um, I love doing the Q&A bit more anyway. But these bits here in the back of the presentation, which you should be able to get from the website uh, a bit later when it gets uploaded. Uh, ways to delve through into this detail, in, in this, into more detail. This first one here is an article I'm gonna to go to in a minute. But the second one is a white paper attached to this AU class done by Quinton. Uh, so there's an hour, probably an hour recording there. I'm not sure if the recording's added, but there's definitely the white paper you can download and read and have a read of that, as well as these two AKN articles, which go into a little bit more detail as well. So if you have any issues, jump into those and have a look as, as well. But on the CAD line community page, if I go to my browser, I can find it again. I've opened that already. And it's not a terribly long article, but the key thing is this last sentence is really nice summarized. As everything we've talked about today, really this means in practice that you should create blocks for custom parts and actuators in the same units as your project, and you should create block-based catalog components using the same units as the units of nominal diameter you specify for your catalog. So where possible, always keep the units the same and that will minimize your problems. Now, it's always with everything with Plant 3D, the more complicated we make something, the more chance we have to come across errors. So simplicity is, is a happy place to be. Okay, so going back to my presentation, that is the finish of the display. Uh, I'm just gonna touch on this question here I see from Seed. I see Vinod's already answered, thank you. Uh, so Seed so has asked, if we link a Plant 3D model in Imperial units in Revit, into Revit, I'll say, that is a metric unit file, then which unit data may we get for the plant? So what I'm interpreting there is if we link a plant 3D project that is Imperial, for example, into a metric Revit project, what happens? Uh, and Vinod has answered that to say, it will scale on the units set in the base application uh, on which you are opening the file. Um, so that does sound right, although I would have I haven't tested that myself. The uh, so what he's suggesting there is if you're inputting a uh, imperial, imperial Plant 3D model into a Revit metric project, it will scale that Plant 3D model to metric units. That would be what kind of what I'd hope it should be okay. Testing would be the way to improve that, and it would be interesting to do the uh, same test for Nod in BIM 360 actually. Makes sense, yeah. I, I'd be interested to try that in BIM 360. I haven't done that. That'd be an interesting test. Okay, I see a new question yeah. coming in. Is it possible to switch between mixed metric to metric if the template started? So no, when you're, when you're using a template project, let me go into Plant 3D and I'll show you. Um, so this is an Imperial project, but it's, it's kind of irrelevant for the purpose of what I'm doing. Uh, let me grab a template project. 
that's what I want to do. I want to use a template project. Uh, plant projects 2021 sample project sample project i'll just pick that one yeah that's an imperial project that's okay see when you go to the second page which is all about the units um, everything's grayed out now if you're doing a metric project that is still going to be grayed out because we're actually copying the project uh, all the project settings it's a, it's a direct copy of that project and, and of course you can't go back and edit that so unfortunately there are third-party tools which might be able to help with things like this not going to mention any any names or any vendors or anything like that but um, you there may be ways to create new projects without being locked out like this or synchronize projects settings across multiple uh, projects from one to the other um, google that and have a look if you if that helps but no the short answer is you can't change the units from mixed metric to metric uh, if you're using a template project only if I kill that off there, when I go next, can I then change that? Could, could do that first. Okay, so not so nice. <laughs> That's no problems, Richard. Thank you for the question. It's going to be very boring if people don't ask questions. Uh, there are tools out there, um, and I would encourage you to go have a look uh, that. Uh, really good for managing projects and doing things that we just haven't personally had as an organization had time to develop. Um, if you haven't seen it, I don't know if I've got a page on it, but if I go back to here, uh, auto desk exchange, I think it is, app store, appsautodesk.com. If you haven't seen this before, this can be a really good resource and can save you a lot of time and money, uh, which is time is money, right? Uh, in the long run, if you, there's a plant 3D here, I just click on that's going to give me everything there's a lot of stuff in here that you can access if nothing else the uh, the content packs are in here as well so you get some content when you install plant 3d there's additional ones in here that are uh, part of the standard package so if you're looking for stuff have a look in here as well and you can filter for these uh, but there's other things in here um, that are, are pretty cool and do some pretty pretty awesome stuff that you may be interested in as well. So delve into there. Uh, and if you haven't seen it, jump in, have a dig around. There's some really, really cool things. That's by no means the, the extent of it. There's a lot more. Um, I'm not sure how to explain I need to start digging through here. So a whole bunch of things that can help you dig through and do some really, really um, complicated stuff. Okay, see a new question coming in. Is the block-based actuator can be stored on a different catalog as the valve? But, oh, that's an excellent question. Uh, can a can an actuator be stored in a different catalog to the valve body? My gut feeling is probably not. Um, although I have never actually tested that, I, I would be more questioning why you would have two different catalogs the two parts um, certainly if you were to add what I'm thinking actually just thinking through the process if you're building the spec out you would be adding them to the spec uh, and that would build out into the into the plant so you possibly could uh, I, I would suggest you could test that I don't see there'd be any issues if it worked uh, my gut feeling though is personally I, I would leave the valves and the actuators in the same catalog uh, but I can see why you might choose to alter that. Have you not any thoughts on that one? Uh, David I think I agree with you as well on this. I, I don't think we should uh, uh, swap the catalog here for the components. I was about to write to David on uh, sorry uh, to Ray on that so I agree with you fully. Cool that's great that's good, good. excellent and that was the one. that was that one that's good excellent good questions i love getting questions yeah. certainly challenge that little noodle of mine okay well someone someone else throw me a hairy question oh. see if you can stop me if you don't want to type it into the chat you can always unmute and you can ask it in person. It's 
got to be some questions out there. Well, while we're waiting, oh, there comes one. Just I was about to move on. Miss Jared, how you going? Good to hear from you. Imperial connection to a metric HTTP HTTP sizes to you. Yeah, look, uh, as far as metric and imperial connections go, um, if I'm reading your question correctly, you're asking whether we can connect uh, metric. Uh, unmute me. Yeah, sure. <laughs> uh, oh, I'll unmute. Hey, everybody, there you go. You should be able to ask your question now. Huh? Hey, David, how are you? Good, Jared. Great to hear from you. Yeah, mate. Hey, uh, we, we've got a project on at the moment, and we've got HDPE size pipe, which is metric, and in the HDPE yep. size range. So you've got, you know, you, you 110, which is equivalent to 100 millimeter uh, nominal bore, four inch nominal bore. Um, and we've got steel sizes um, that, you know, obviously imperial. Um, the problem that we have got, and um, we've we've got a workaround for it, but the problem we've got is connecting between the two over a wafer-based valve connection. It just doesn't work. Just doesn't work over over a wafer valve. Uh, yeah. Okay. So, so you've you got the wafer, to... you've got a wafer butterfly valve, and it connects yep. between a backing flange um, on a um, on an HDPE pipe, and the other end is a, um, you know, steel ASME, you know, four inch flange. Uh, it just doesn't want to connect and do all the bolting correctly. It just doesn't work. The only way we found to do it is actually do all the HDPE stuff in imperial sizes and use some fancy you know databasing to uh, to report the numbers correctly when it comes to the bill of materials and reporting that's always always scary fancy databasing <laughs> oh, yeah you know, um, you, you know i can do it i certainly do but, uh yeah that's i can picture that connection uh, i'm pretty sure i've actually modeled mm -hmm. myself in the past uh um, yeah, yeah so, so you'd have a yeah, backing flange on one side stud but bolts always been on the shimmy yeah that's a metric component and then yeah stud bolts yeah it doesn't really matter which bolts you use but um yeah, yeah once, once you go to the other side which is you know now calling up a 100 millimeter nominal bore and then you've got 110 on the other side um it doesn't like it it just does not connect and you know tom and i have sat down and we've gone through it and spent hours on it together yeah wafer and, joints are, are difficult from that perspective because you've got the it's not like it's just a flange joint uh, that's right extra, extra bit in the middle that's probably confusing yeah. yeah even if we tried to do matching sizes you can't because you know when you've got your your 25 matches your 20 and then you've got your um you know your 25 and hdpe matches 20 millimeter in your your steel size and then you've got your uh 25 millimeter and 32 millimeter match as well like you know 25 millimeter steel and 32 millimeter hdpe it just doesn't match because now you've got two sizes in that matching property mm. just yeah I... so that's a good one if you could get that sorted out with development have you created a ticket for that <laughs> no nah, nah. nah, just no nah, just we just um yeah, in the end, we just came up with a, a, a brilliant workaround that works. So, <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, it'd be interesting to see a forum post on it, um, just a or, or, or a case just to, to get some um, development comment on it because that's yeah, you kind of need that to be able to yeah. push that through. But, mm. um, sorry, if you know, do you have a comment? No, uh, I'll, I'll just reach out to you uh, a little bit on this and then probably we can escalate as well outside of the case. Yeah, that'll be great. Thanks for not. But yeah, that's a, that's a really interesting one. I I suspect it's probably to the yeah because it's a complicated connection. Uh, yes. Throughout my experience, the wafer wafer connections have been problematic no. that way. Yeah, um, same. You try Even, creating a matching steel connection and sort of I want to <laughs> I'm gonna be very yeah. Aussie here for a second. Uh, <laughs> bodging the HTPs. What we've done is. Um, 
you know, basically HDPE, we've we've got a table to say what matches what. You know, 110 equals 100 millimeter. So we we basically call it nominal diameter 100, but your um, your matching pipe OD is still 110. Um, so you can actually use that matching pipe OD in your isometrics and your bill of materials. And you can also do stuff in the in the database to you know mix those numbers up. So you're getting what you need in the end. But from a modeling point of view, it's all fudging it, but it's coming out right at the isometric side. Nicely done. It was something I brought up when I was at Autodesk years ago too, mate. You know, with development, but uh, nothing yeah. Was done about it. Yeah, it, it all takes time, as you well know. Um, yeah. yeah she's moving, but she's a slow ship. Um, yeah, really interesting, actually. So I'll, I'll leave that with Vinod to, to investigate that with you a bit further. The, yeah, cool. uh, you guys can connect that. That would be... Um, uh, let me know how you go, Vinod. <laughs> the, I do see from, from Anthony, there is a comment here. So for Australia, should me, mixed metric always be used? Look, I, I'll take... I notice uh, Vinod, you've answered that. Uh, are you asking us to confirm? So uh, I'll take that as, as a question because it's phrased as a question. Uh, should yes, it's a question. Um, so I would, I'm going to say no. It shouldn't always be used. Um, the reason mixed metric is available is because it is desired by certain industries. Uh, the reason metric and imperial both are available is because it's desired by certain industries. The my general suggestion would be you use the units that are required by the project. Uh, and that can be defined as being required by your organisation, your team. Uh, or your client, um, yeah, all those sort of things come into play. I will suggest, well, I, as a piping designer, love mixed metric. It's it's sort of my background and what I'm used to seeing, which is why it confuses all my family when I talk about inches and feet and all sorts of things. They get awfully confused, and I can talk about meters and everything else in the same sentence. Um, I, I I don't have any problem seeing nominal diameters in inches or, or metric. Um, but uh, bolts and things, I, I tend to default to Imperial. So it, it it's really becomes a personal preference thing or a project uh, preference thing. That said, there has in the past been difficulties with metric, mixed metric. So we have seen issues previously uh, that things were fine in Imperial and in metric projects, but were a bit uncomfortable or hokey in mixed metric. Now, the way I think about that uh, is things were probably built originally in the day um, in metric imperial, maybe, maybe not. Uh, and then there's well, an e-metric as well. So that was added on. And mix, mixed metric was kind of an addition to that as the next step. Not as an afterthought, but as the next step. Um, and we are fixing those things and have been fixing those. I don't know if there's any more of those left. I'm not entirely sure that I've seen those, but if you are experiencing problems with mixed mixed metric specs, uh, it is a good practice to try and replicate them in a metric or an imperial spec in, um, environment and see if it replicates there as well. And that might just let you know where, uh, where that problem is. And if you do find things that are restricted to a particular unit for some reason, uh, and drop it in the forums or put a, yeah, a case into the support guys to have a look at because we want to know about these things. We, we do want to fix these problems. I hope that answers your question, Anthony. But we are getting close to uh, the top of the hour. Uh, I'll go back to my presentation because it's always nice to close out on a pretty screen. Um, as always, uh, I've got the, just while I'm waiting to see if any other questions come in, we do have time for other questions. Um, at the back of the presentation, if you're looking for more information, we do have the uh, reference materials that are great places to go for help. Uh, we do have the resource store that you can download the presentations and there is a hyperlink to the YouTube page. Customer Success Hub has got oodles of information if you're looking for things. Uh, and the Plant 3D with the Experts vlog. If you haven't seen that, jump into the YouTube uh, channel there uh, and Google um, the AutoCAD YouTube channel. Look for the Plant 3D with the Experts uh, playlist. Some great little videos there uh, to uh, just help you out with a few things. Uh, the collaboration project stuff's in there as well as our previous month's meetups. A couple of others there. Don't forget to register for coming, upcoming meetups. And if you've got interest in other areas or you've got teammates 
that are working in the other areas as we nearly always do. We've also got the BIM ones, the architectural ones, civil 3D ones, electrical engineer ones, and there's an MEP one I think hiding underneath. There's an MEP one as well. Uh, mechanical ones, there's, there's a bunch of these happening now all through the Customer Success Learning Hub. Um, this address here will get you to there. If you haven't seen those, share them with, you, with your colleagues. Make sure they know about them because there's so much information being shared to help you become the best at what uh, in your field and do so much better in your organizations and in your in your businesses and just put yourselves there to, to you know adding value to you in your, in your in your projects um so yeah share those and share alike and don't forget if you're using collaboration projects make sure you subscribe to the health dashboard we've seen a couple of things happen recently that have affected that and that one's not relevant so so yeah look that's the end for today i don't see any other questions coming in uh, i'm going to go back to my last closing slide slide and uh, thank you very much for coming. It was absolutely wonderful to see some number of people in today. Great to get some questions that have really tickled my noodle. It's just, um, thanks, Jared. That one's a, it's a curly one for sure. <laughs> and uh, great to hear somebody else's voice other than mine and Vinod's. So even better to hear that. Thank you very much. I really um, hope you can make it next month. Thank you for coming. And if there's no other questions, I will close it here and let you get on with lunch or your morning tea, your afternoon tea. Thank, Thank you, David. Thanks for your nod, mate. Thanks for joining. Thank you, Thank you everyone.